Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Tell me how can I forget forget what the Lord is doing for us. Amen. In fact, we should remember our, his testimonies uh, concerning us or the testimonies we have concerning the Lord so it can help us to advance further Amen. because oftentimes trust and trials come to discourage us Amen. and we ought to often look back over our life to see what the Lord has done. Amen. And when we think about what the Lord has done, it helps us to be able to uh, stand in the midst of whatever we're going through, knowing that God is faithful. Amen? Amen. The Lord is faithful. And he's faithful, and we praise God for his faithfulness. Amen. As the scripture says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions, they fail not. Amen. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So as we prepare our health, ourselves for the, uh, the Bible study on today. I um, want to give you an opportunity if you have a particular prayer request. Amen. You can let it be known on today. Mother Davis. Pray for all Hallelujah. Christian ministries. Yes. Our bishop. Yes. Let's sir. pray for one another. Mm -hmm. And uh, continue. Let's pray for the people that have uh, health conditions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Health issues. I have two children that they both have serious health issues. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Jackie, mm -hmm. uh, Priscilla, yes. you know, some different ones among us. Remember uh, Evangelist Stephanie's son, mm -hmm. he's in intensive care. Yes. So pray for her, pray for him, pray for her. You know that the Lord deliver him, whatever the condition is, he has a condition in his body, but we know God is able, so pray for him and pray for her that the Lord strengthen her and encourage her. Yes, amen. And also, uh, as you were saying, I uh, pray for uh, Sister Jessie. Uh, she had lost her father. He had passed um, uh, a couple days ago. So uh, pray for her and the family. Uh, Brother Pittman, yeah, uh, used to come uh, oftentimes on Sundays with her down on uh, 31st Street. Uh, so pray that the Lord will comfort her heart and the family's heart Amen. And, and, and continue to pray like he said for Christian ministries Amen. as we grow in grace and in, in the knowledge and wisdom and understanding and, and togetherness and to grow us in unity Amen. one with another. Amen. Amen. And sister um, uh, Jackie did uh, uh, let me know that um, you know uh, 
she and the doctor are working together, so she's expecting to feel better soon. Amen. So that's, she said, tell the saints, uh, thank you for praying. Continue to pray. Uh, I guess they got reminded of that song to say, help is on the way. <laughs> yes, help is on the way. So let us continue to pray in, in such manner. And um, also, uh, let us uh, pray for our Bible study on today, uh, that the Lord uh, have his way in our midst, and also our event that we're having on uh, Saturday, uh, so all things beauty. Pray that the Lord will bless uh, uh, that particular event. All right. Uh, if there'd be none other prayer request, we'd like to ask the church to stand. Thank you, Jesus. And let every heart pray, O oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way, giving us a mind, Lord, to come together, to hear of your word, to fellowship one with another, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that your most perfect will we've done in our lives. We thank you for an opportunity, Lord, to give you thanks, to magnify you, to lift you up. Hallelujah, to give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you look upon each and every request, look upon each and every unspoken request. We ask you, Lord, that you uh, move by your grace and move by your power. Hallelujah. Answer each and every request by according to your will, according to your riches and glory. Lord, you're the only help that we know. Hallelujah. We acknowledge you, Lord, in all of our ways that you might direct our path, Lord. Fulfill your purpose. Fulfill your calling. Hallelujah. Upon our lives, Lord. We surrender unto you. And Lord, we'll be mindful and give you glory and honor and praise. We ask you, Lord, that you'll be in our midst on tonight. Hallelujah. Manifest your Shekinah glory. Hallelujah. Grant the door of utterance. Grant ears to hear the engrafted word of God. Uh, send fresh manner in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you and praise your clarity of thought and speech. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> and uh, we certainly do want to go to the book of Ephesians chapter number 6 as we finish up this particular chapter. Amen. We will finish up this particular chapter and we praise God. Hallelujah. Because he's good to us. And, uh, and Paul is uh, talking about tonight putting on the whole armor of God. And that whole armor, uh, the whole armor of God really represents the word of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's literally saying, uh, be proficient in God's word. And if you're going to fight in this battle, you've got to know the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. My people perish, he said, for a lack of knowledge. Amen. A lack of knowledge of what? A lack of knowledge of the word of God. Um, what I've come to understand in studying the Word, even if you uh, don't have a, 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 a formal education, if, if you study God's Word, uh, you'll be successful. You'll know how to go in and out before people. Uh, you'll know how to attain and maintain things uh, if you simply know the Word of God and, um, and, and apply its principles to your daily living uh, because that's what the Word of God is styled for, uh, for you to apply it to your daily living so that you can be successful. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And, and I mean that, I'm, and I'm a proponent of education. I want people to get education, but I'm a realist. And the reality is, <clears throat> if you uh, study God's Word and apply God's Word to your life, you will be successful. Uh, that's a guarantee. Backed by God. Not the FDA, but backed by God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So, um, in, our, in our lesson today, um, Deacon Fields, will you be our reader? Are you up to it? Yeah. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. It, it takes some of the pressure off of me. <laughs> uh, Ephesians chapter number 6, and we want to begin with verse number 10. 
Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, what, uh, there's a couple things that uh, I want you to, to have in your mind and, and possibly also to write down. You know, and uh, the church itself, the church itself, and we being the makeup of the church, are in a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. You know, that spiritual battle is constant. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And even while you sleep, the enemy is still battling against you. And uh, the, the Bible says, he that keepeth Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. You know, so, so God is protecting you all day and all night. You know, even while you sleep. Because the enemy is trying to sow things and to stir up things to get at you. So um, we have to realize this, that we're in a constant spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. It's a constant battle, and it's a constant conflict. And um, the hardest fight is, is when you uh, make up in your mind that you're going to do something. When you make up in your mind that you're going to do something that's right, mm -hmm. do something that's holy and righteous, that's concerning the will of God and God's purpose toward you. The enemy is going to come at you the hardest. Right. He's going to come at you the hardest to get you in the beginning so that you can be discouraged and not move forward with what you plan to do. Right. So we got to realize that. That anytime that you start something that's meaningful, that's according to the will of God, the enemy is going to attack you the hardest. It's going to come at you because it makes sense, doesn't it? That, that, that if, if you want to get somebody that's going to be great, get somebody that's going to do right, you might as well get them in the beginning. You know, get them before they get you. <laughs> that's, that's the enemy's philosophy. Get, get you before you get him. You know, so, so, so we have to be mindful of that. And being mindful of that then, when, when it occurs, when it happens, don't be weary in well-doing, because you shall reap if you faint not. Amen? So even though it, you realize that it's going to be a struggle in the beginning, continue on. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Be always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know your labor is not in vain. Amen? So, so in the beginning, he's going to attack the hardest, and then there's another uh, area that he's going to attack the hardest. Mm -hmm. It's not in the middle, but in the end. Mm -hmm. when, it, when, when you get close to, to your victory, when you get close to your daylight, he's going to come again with another bombardment because he don't want you to be successful. Mm -hmm. Amen? He don't want you to be successful. So you've got to guard yourself and realize then, what am I saying? Uh, Pastor Quinn, that, that you started and you're doing well and you overcome that first bombardment of attack and, and you're in the middle of it and it seemed like, okay, I'm making some progress here. And then he comes to attack you again. Realize then that when that attack comes, you at your breakthrough. Uh, you at your breakthrough. So don't give up. Uh, keep on pressing. Keep on pushing. Because your breakthrough moment is about to come. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. My God. Am I right? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So, so, so once again, don't be weary in your well-doing. Huh? Because you got about, you're about to reap. God is about to bless you. There's a lot of people even in their, uh, their walk with God, as they walk with God, as they seek after God, uh, and the parables that Jesus taught about the sower and the seed. Uh, that, that seed comes when, when, when the first person first tries to receive it, then here comes the devil to take that word out of their heart. And then uh, that word that was sown by uh, the wayside, that first one was the stony ground, that, which is sown by the wayside. They get all encouraged, huh? but, and, and they spring up, but they have no root. Uh, and and testing trials come, uh, and it steals it steals their joy, and it 
it causes them uh, to wither away because they didn't get rooted and grounded in the Lord. And then that, and then that third, that third uh, area of life with that word, uh, when it comes to when it's being sold and it's uh, uh, the, the, the tears and the, and, and the cares of this word world, choke it, choke it out. And, and those are your people that have been with the Lord and they, they lose focus. Amen. We never want to lose focus with the Lord. Stay on point. Stay on target. And then that fourth one is the, uh, the people who bring forth fruit with patience. Amen. You got you to gotta develop a, a, a mindset of patience to be ability to wait on God. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you a secret. Hallelujah. It won't be a secret after I say it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But, but what waters the word is, is prayer, uh, anointed prayer. Amen. Anointed prayer waters that word that God puts in your heart. And, and that's why you've got to have uh, an anointed prayer life. Uh, and, I, and I mean that word anointed. You know, and, and you can you can pray and oh God bless me and help me and bless my family, bless my children. You know, but you've got to get into it where the anointing is flowing. There's a difference. Amen. There's a difference. Because when when that word gets into your heart like a seed, it can it and then that it can start to germinate and break forth. And you need water. Amen, which represents the anointing uh, to, to come in there to water it so it can penetrate, so it can break forth, so it can move, so it can grow, so it can bring forth fruit uh, in its season. Amen. So if you if you lacking a, an anointed prayer life, this is the opportunity for you to, to get that back. Amen. To get that back. Because that, that, that's what's needed. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Uh, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And, if, and, and you know, I, I'm a proponent of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. But, but you know, you, you got to have that anointing. Amen? Because the Holy Ghost makes intercession for you. There's some things you don't know what to pray for. You don't know how to pray for. Amen? And if, I'm talking about uh, winning spiritual battles and getting over spiritual victories. And that Holy Ghost, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, the God searches your heart. Amen? And, and it knows what's in the, in, in, in the mind of God and, and the Holy Ghost knows what's in your mind. Amen? And it's able to make intercession. Amen? Hallelujah. For you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, so, so that's needed. Huh? As part of your spiritual battle. That's needed a part of your spiritual warfare and your spiritual fight. Amen? Hallelujah. Tests and trials reveal what's lacking, but they also reveal what's, what's needed. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Deacon Fields? I'm just uh, thinking about relationships and, you know, you wear a wedding ring to remind you that you're married. Amen, bro. <laughs> when you look at it, it's like, it should bring back to your memories that you are joined with someone. Right. And, Coming. You, and when you have this armor on, you know, when you have God's armor on, it should keep you focused and reminded that it is Him that is protecting you. Oh, yeah. You're in the relationship with him. You're not doing this thing of yourself. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and like people said, as far as your prayer life is 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 con connected. You it's have to stay connected. Connected. That's connected. where the power comes from. Yes. And I want to stress anointed prayer life. Because a lot of us walk around and pray. <laughs> you know what I mean? But do, do you pray in the anointing? Do you pray until the anointing falls? Amen. That's that's huge difference. That's the difference between a Pinto and a Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Cadillac, a Pinto will get you where you want to be, but 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 a Cadillac will get you there and stop. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lord. And and you'll get there uh, 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 on time. Amen. 
So, so, and, and, and before we start the Bible class, realize once again that, that we're in a, a spiritual battle, a spiritual conflict. And the hardest fight is when you're about to start some things. Amen. To, to, to you say, Lord, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some changes in my life. Here come the enemy to block you before you can make them changes. Amen. Amen. He don't want you to get a foothold. Amen. Uh, he trying to get you before you get him. <laughs> Thank you, you know, old sloop footed. Thank you, Lord. And then you, your next hardest fight is when you're about to make your breakthrough. When you're about to make your breakthrough, that's another time where he comes and tries to bombard you because he wants you to lose hope, lose courage, lose strength, be discouraged. Amen. Uh, Pillar uh, Durant? Uh, in his life, and like you said, the breakthrough at the end. Every every test that you pass and everything that you defeated and everything you defeated, y'all defeated together, it's going to come all right back around together. Everything yeah. Power, everything that you thought you defeated is going to start tempting you on every angle. It's like a bombarded of uh, everything you ever went through in your life. So all distractions will come to you when you're at that breaking point. Absolutely. And that's why the Bible says, don't be weary in well-doing, for you shall reap if you what? Don't faint. Amen. Don't get discouraged. Don't lose hope. When he told Joshua, be not dismayed. Amen. Don't be dismayed. Don't allow yourself to be discouraged. That's, that's a trick of the enemy. Amen. Huh? That's a trick of the devil, being discouraged. Woe is me. Uh, when you start getting into your own head, thinking about woe is me and, and, and uh, you know, uh, testing trials is getting me and all of this and that, then that's when the enemy uh, is, is, is trying to bring you down. What you think on affects your mood. Uh, and your mood affects your behavior. Yeah. Amen? So you got to do what Philippians say, 4 and 8. Think on these things. Whatsoever things are good, uh, honest, uh, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, amen, whatsoever things are lovely, uh, think on these things. That's what you got to uh, 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 bring that thought into captivity, uh, into the be obedience of Christ, amen? Now, the, the other thing that I want you to focus on as far as spiritual battle and spiritual warfare is this is that spiritual battles require spiritual strength. Yeah. Amen? If you're not, if you're not uh, uh, building yourself up, the enemy going to get you. Right. Amen? He's going to get you. He's going to find that weakness and get you. And, and notice what I said. Building yourself up. Because you can be strong today, this month, huh? and, and, and stop doing what's necessary uh, weakness is set in and the enemy is waiting like, like, a, like a lion. They lead looking, uh, waiting for the weakness. Uh, he's, he's got his eyes on you, waiting for the moment to pounce. Amen? He's waiting. He's shrewd. So, so you've got to be in the mode of continually building yourself up. Huh? Huh? Am I right? Hey, and the Bible tells us uh, part of, the, of building yourself up is also praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. You need that word and you need prayer. Yeah. Amen. Anointed prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you, in that prayer, you're seeking the mind of Christ. In that prayer, you're seeking the spirit of Christ. His mind is his intellect. Uh, his wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, knowledge and understanding, counsel and might. The fear of the Lord, the quick understanding of the fear of the Lord. That's, that's the mind of Christ. Amen. And the spirit of Christ is his attitude. Amen. You got to do it in the right attitude. Hallelujah. You got to do it in the right attitude. Your attitude means everything. Amen. It means everything. Huh? Hallelujah. You can... You can, you can do something right, but not do it in the right attitude, and it's still wrong. Amen? Your motive. What's your motive? 
God, God looks upon the intent of the heart. Amen? And, and, and also, too, it, it, it's, it's a pendulum that swings both ways. You can have the right attitude and, and fall short, and God will impute things to you for righteousness' sake. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so it doesn't just uh, a counterproductive a a attitude uh, works against you, but if you got the right attitude and you still fall short, God will impute. Huh? Thank you, Lord, for, for righteousness' sake. That's how important your attitude is. Amen? Hallelujah. Your attitude will open doors for you. Your attitude will move mountains for you. Your attitude will cause you to be encouraged and others to be encouraged. Uh, your attitude will cause breakthroughs to happen. Amen? Your attitude shows God that, that, that Lord, you can trust me. Uh, you can believe in me. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm going to wait all of my appointed time. Amen. Look, look at the attitude of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Uh, look at their attitude. They, they, they were in a position where they were getting ready to be thrown in the fiery furnace, you know, and, and they believed God would deliver them, but they said that if he don't deliver us, you know, huh, we still ain't going. We still ain't going to buy that on too. So they, went, they didn't fully know if God would do it. They knew that he was able to do it, but Lord, will you do it for me? You follow me? But look at their attitude. <laughs> Hallelujah. They said, Lord, if you don't do it, I know you're still able. Uh, Lord, I know you'll still make a way. I know, you, I know you're still good. I'm, I'm not going to lose hope in you. Uh, I'm not going to lose faith in you. Uh, look, at, look, at, look at Job's attitude, afflicted in his body. Uh, not, not knowing if God would heal him. Amen? His friends turned their back on him. Right. Thank you, Lord. His wife turned their, her back on him. Uh, lost his finances. Lost his family. But, but look at his attitude. Lord, uh, in this flesh, uh, I'm going to see you. Look at that attitude. I'm still not going to give up. Uh, though, though, though I'm being afflicted, uh, I'm still not going to give up. That's the attitude God wants you to have. Amen? When you got that type of attitude, you won't desert. Uh, you won't turn your back on the Lord. If you got that attitude, you won't retreat uh, on the Lord. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. You may, you may lose some battles, but you won't retreat. <laughs> uh, you may suffer some losses, but you won't retreat. Ah, uh, yeah, glory. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. All right. And, and the third thing that, that before we get into the Bible study, I'm trying to lay a good foundation here. Thank you. I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Is, is that you got to realize who supplies this armor. Amen. It's God that supplies the armor. Uh, and it's up to us to put it on. Amen. We got a responsibility in it. If you make up in your mind, Lord, I'm going to be victorious in you. You have to put on, make up in your mind that I'm going to put on what, what's required. Amen? What's required in battle. Follow me? Because if you don't, then you leave yourself vulnerable to the devil. I was, uh, I was uh, in that ROTC uh, in, in my last year of college. I wish I went on and did it, but, but I didn't. So don't cry over spilled milk. <laughs> but but my point is this they had like uh, us doing some training out there in Edinburgh and I had it in my mind you know they give you a canteen and you're supposed to put water in it and I had it in my mind uh -uh, I ain't putting no water I'm going to put me some Kool-Aid <laughs> y'all know how we are <laughs> so you know I'm drinking it an hour in I'm feeling good Two hours in, now, now I'm getting dehydrated. Because what's Kool-Aid made out of? Sugar. Sugar, Sugar is, is, is against water. It dehydrates you. And I started getting dehydrated, messing myself up, trying to think that I was smart. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. See, see that's, that's what we can run into when we don't do what God requires. Huh? Do it our own way. Huh? Mess ourselves up. May start out well, but you get hindered. 
Huh? You get in me? Now who put that thought in my mind? The devil. <laughs> he worked with my own desires. Amen. The devil works with your own desires. I'm gonna blame it on the devil. <laughs> but but y'all get the point. Huh? I wasn't I, I was given the proper equipment, but I didn't utilize it in the proper way, and it affected me. When you are, God is offering you his whole armor. Be serious about it. Serious as a heart attack. Amen? And he's offering this to you. And, and, and in order for you to be effective, you've got to put it on. All of it on. Amen? If you don't, you're going to be vulnerable. If you don't, you're going to be susceptible. You follow me? And the enemy will find that vulnerability. Trust me. Uh, he will find the weakness. Trust me. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. All right. So let's go back to, to Deacon, Deacon Fields. Be in uh, 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 Ephesians 6 and 10. What's it say? Finally, my brethren, uh -huh. be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right. Now he says... Finally, he's coming about the conclusion of his epistle. All right, God, in the beginning, that epistle, he talked about how the Lord, he, he had given us everything that we need that pertain unto life and godliness. That God predestinated us, he called us, he anointed us. My God, he's given us uh, 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 the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Thank you, Lord, in the, in the, in the, in the counsel of his will. And he's, he's given us gifts. He's given us the fivefold ministry. So now, and he's telling the children and, uh, to obey their parents. He told the husbands to love their wives. And he told the wives to reverence and love your husbands uh, uh, and to submit to your husbands. Now he's saying, finally. Uh, he's saying, finally now. And this finally here is, uh, if you don't do this, None of that other stuff matters because the enemy will get you. You follow me? If, 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 if you don't protect yourself, if you don't wage war, then none of that other stuff, the calling that God has on your life matters. Uh, everything that he predestinated you for, uh, if you don't do this, none of that matters. Because the enemy will kill you. The enemy will destroy you. The enemy will attack you and overcome you if you don't do this. You follow me? It's like you having a million dollar house and you lose. <laughs> no, you know the thought came to my mind. If you got, if you, got you a million dollar lottery ticket uh, and you lose it, nothing else matters as far as you getting that money. It's gone because you didn't protect it. Follow me? Now, I ain't promoting y'all playing the lottery. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Just trying to give you an analogy. <laughs> you follow me? We don't do gambling around here. Amen? Thank you, Lord. But now, if, if, if what God has for you is sure, uh, what God has promised you is sure, if you don't do this, you won't attain to that. You follow me? It wouldn't matter. All of, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. All the prophecies that Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, huh? none of that matters if you don't do this. Huh? Huh? Y'all with me? That inheritance among them that are sanctified, that, that, is, that is yours. If you don't do this, uh, you might as well get your eyes out of heaven. You'll be overcome and overrun by the devil. You follow me? Hallelujah. All right. Now, he says, all right, he says, finally, my brethren, be what? Be strong. Now, notice, notice that verb there. It's a positive tense verb telling you what to be. It's an action telling you be strong. Amen? Be strong. Huh? Be strong where? In the Lord and what? Be strong in God. And be empowered by him. Amen. Be strong in God. 
and be empowered by him. He empowers you. In him you live. In him you move. In him you have your being. You follow? All right, read. What's it say? Put on the whole arm of God. Uh-huh. That you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. Now, this is the purpose of that armor. And once again, that armor relates to the word of God. You can substitute, be strong in the word of God. Amen? Be strong in the whole word of God. Amen? you got to spend time in that word, and you got to spend time in prayer in that word. Amen? Now notice what he said. He said, uh, the, the purpose of that armor is for you to be able to stand your ground against the attack of the devil. The devil is coming to attack you. Huh? And you've got to be able to stand your ground and, and not retreat. God never expected you to retreat. He expected you to stand your ground. Amen? That's the purpose of the arm. That's the purpose of the word. For you to be able to stand your ground. You got to think about it like this. That, that God is a king. And he's looking for territory. Every king wants territory. And God wants you as his soldier to advance his kingdom. Amen? His purpose, his will. Huh? And every time a king gives up territory, it, it shrinks his kingdomship and it, and it, and it, and it puts forth a, a, a picture that it's a weak king. You follow me? When, when uh, we were in the process of buying 31st Street up there um, uh, from the Episcopal Church, uh, and, and when we were in negotiations and talking about it, and they said to me, uh, do you intend to keep this a Christian church? And, you know, in my mind, I'm saying, of course I do. You know what I mean? And, and then the bishop, he, he let me know why he was saying that. He said, we have it in our tenets, in our, in our, in our bylaws, that when we have a church, that we don't sell it for any other purpose than it being a church because we can't give that territory to the devil. You follow me? That comes from God. God does not want to give any territory back to the devil. That's why he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God wants you to take territory. Amen? Hallelujah. God wants you to advance his kingdom. Notice, when he first poured out the Holy Ghost, huh? he said that, uh, uh, I want you to go to Jerusalem and tarry there until you be endued with power from on high. Right? And he said, uh, uh, when the Holy Ghost comes, truly John baptize you with water, but you shall be baptized uh, with the Holy Ghost and with power. Now notice, then he said his very next statement, and ye shall be witnesses uh, of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the world. That's our, that's our first mission, uh, is to be a witness. Amen? Uh, notice what he said, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then he said, all these other things that you desire shall be added unto you. Because all those other things are the spoil. That cut off those shot. Unless you get into the battle, you can't reap the spoil. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. There was, I remember it distinctly, only in the scriptures, wherein the children of Israel, they, they went over to, to, to fight with David in Ziklag because they stole everything that David and his men had 
And as, and as them, them, them tribes went over there to fight, there was one tribe, uh, something happened to them, and, and uh, they didn't uh, uh, go over to fight with the rest of them. So when they, when they won the victory and took back the spoil, uh, they came back, and there was an uproar because the tribe that uh, had some issues and couldn't go over, they, the, the mother tribe said, ah, uh -uh, y'all ain't getting none of this. Huh? Cause y'all didn't go over and fight with us, amen. See, see, by right they didn't have a, a right to the spoil because they didn't go over and fight, huh? And they, and I believe, and when I was reading the scripture, they had a legitimate excuse, huh? Hey, you know, but but that didn't matter, huh? Hallelujah. We can't be going by excuses. You follow me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But you know, David, he was a righteous man. He said, uh uh, we're gonna give him their portion too. Thank you, Lord. Uh, but 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 my point is this: is that uh, uh, all these other things are gonna be added up to you uh, if you seek first the kingdom uh, and his righteousness. Uh, you can't expect the spoils if you're not doing what, what God has required you to do. Amen? Y'all with me tonight? Yeah. I feel like I'm teaching some adult folk here today. Hallelujah. Some mature folk here today. Yeah. Hey, come on, shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. All right. All right. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The purpose of the armor is for you to be able to do what? To stand and not do what? Huh? And not retreat. Amen. That's important. The purpose of the armor is for you to withstand the fight that the enemy is bringing you and that you don't retreat. That you don't give up. Amen. God can't help you if you give up. God can't help you if you faint. Amen. You got to stand there and fight. Hallelujah. Be persuaded huh? in your own mind. That's the purpose of this armor. For you to be able to stand in, in the fight and not retreat. Amen. Be like Esther. If I perish, I what? I'm going to see the king. Amen. And now, now, now look at being able to stand. Think about Daniel. Amen. When Daniel uh, was a young man, him uh, and Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, that they, they were chosen because they looked good and they had wisdom. And they, they, they were required to eat the king's meat. But they knew that they had a relationship with God. Amen? And, and though they were uh, away in Babylon, amen, Hallelujah. they knew that they still had a covenant with God. Uh, though God allowed them, their city, Jerusalem, to be burned. But they still knew that they had a covenant relationship with God. And they weren't about to take down. They were going to take a stand. Uh, and what did Daniel do? He said, look here. Huh? Uh, uh, we can't eat that king's meat. Uh, we can't eat that pork. That's why. Uh, thank you, Lord. We can't defile ourselves. We serve a true and living God. Uh, just give us. The, the, that, that, that pulse and, and, and them fruits and them nuts and them berries, hallelujah, and, and, and God's going to bless us. Huh? You follow? He took a stand. Huh? And what happened in the end? God, God, God blessed them, huh? made them look better and fairer than all those other ones that was eating that swine. You follow me? Huh? Now, ain't nothing wrong with y'all eating no swine now. Hallelujah. Don't be thought. Y'all gonna throw your pork chop away. Bring it to my house. Hallelujah. And we'll we'll have a barbecue. It'll be all right. Hallelujah. But but my point is, you you gotta take a stand. Huh? Life or death. Hallelujah. Take a stand. Believe your God. Trust your God. Amen. Let 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 God, He's looking for somebody to show Himself strong in. Huh? Hallelujah. He set you up. For position so he can show yourself strong in. You know what? That's the mentality that we ought to go into every battle. That God is looking to show himself strong in me. That's why I'm here. Uh, that's why I'm going through what I'm going through. Uh, can't nobody else do this but me. 
Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what apple it is. He'll cause a raven to come and feed you. <laughs> He'll hold back the sun in many ways. Hallelujah. In many ways. Uh, to confuse the enemy. Hallelujah. So you, you, you don't just have a hammer in your toolbox. Uh, don't just have a screwdriver in your toolbox. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. So, 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 so we see here, he said, what verse here? Wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against what? Principalities, uh, the once, once again, I ain't gonna spend too much time on this because if I do, I, I miss out on my whole Bible class. But those principalities are the, those, those rank and order of the devil and powers. The enemy has spiritual wickedness powers. Amen? Uh, against rulers of darkness of this world. He has people positioned. Amen? That, that are ruling this world for him. And when I'm talking about this world, I'm talking about this world system. Amen? This world system. The devil is the, the god of this world system. This economic system that, that, that we live in. You follow me? Now, he's not in charge of the kingdom of God. That's the, well, that's the system we've been translated to. Amen? Hallelujah. My God. Y'all with me? We've been translated into the kingdom of heaven. That's why we live by its principles, not uh, by the principles of the world. Y'all with me? All right. Now notice, uh, uh, against spiritual wickedness, where? In high places. There's spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil, he likes to control regions. Amen? The same thing that is going on here in Pennsylvania, it's going on in, 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 in the, close to New York, it's going on close to Michigan, it's going on close to Cleveland, uh, and the southern part uh, of Pennsylvania. Follow me? The enemy likes to control regions. You follow me? Thank you, Lord. So, so be mindful of that. The enemy is not, uh, the devil himself isn't everywhere at one time. Uh, he's, not, he's not omnipresent. And he's not omniscient. Amen. He doesn't know everything. But he has a network. Amen. His network, his is, is rank and order are, are, are together. You follow me? That's what makes him, uh, uh, how can I say it? I don't like to say it, but I'll say it. Powerful. <laughs> you know, with a small P. <laughs> Yeah, with a backwards P, I like that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Huh? So, 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 just think, if, if the people of God were like that, networked together, working together, amen, we'd be, we'd be stronger together. That's why the enemy likes to bring about disunity with us. Deacon Fields? Um, it's like the police and stuff like that. They, they'll they'll watch drug dealers and they'll wait until they get all this stuff, right? <laughs> they wait until they get the house and uh, you know money and all. That. Then they raid them and take it off. Take it off. <laughs> take it off. They take everything. Right, and then flip them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Lord. That's their tactic. That's their modus operandi. Amen. The enemy has a tactic. The enemy has a modus operandi. With, it's, and, 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 and the knowledge of it is in the word of God. Brother Dave? Yeah, he, he made a good point. I know the analogy he just said about how they wait till they get all this accumulated, all the drugs to get all this, and the fans come and get them. And what they do, they let them, they let them it takes time to be okay. And right. Like Satan does, he let them, Wow. Wow. <laughs> My God. My God. Doesn't he do that? Uh, what does the scripture call him? Accuser of the brethren. Uh, he'll be a witness against you. God ain't got a problem. <laughs> he'll be a witness uh, against you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. All right. Read, 
Verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God. Now notice, uh, somebody, I believe it was Deacon Fields, he brought up last week. He said, if something is important, God will say it twice. Amen. This is the, the second time that he's saying, take unto you the whole armor of God. Amen. You got to take on the whole armor of God. Nothing else matters. The promises that he's left you, uh, the, the reward that, that you are to be given, the life that you shall live uh, won't mean a hill of beans unless you do this. Amen. All right, read what's said. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now notice, the evil days are coming. Yeah. Uh, the evil day is a fight. And, and what I'm gathering from this, what I'm gathering from this, is this, is that an evil day is a day wherein you are standing at the, the, the heat of the battle. Because, you know, some days the fight isn't as thick. You follow me? The fight isn't as heavy. But then there's some days when everything is thrown at you and the kitchen sink. Huh? Where you feel like, oh, Lord, I just want to die. Just kill me now, Lord. Just kill me. I wish this was all over. You follow me? And, and all hell is breaking out. You follow me? This is, this is what he's describing as an evil day. Not just any day and every day, but a day wherein the winds are blowing, the storm is coming, and it's beating upon your house. Will it stand or will it fall? And Jesus said, I'll show you a wise man who built his house upon my word, which is my rock. You follow? Y'all with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The house that fell, and notice he said, great was the fall of it because it had opportunity, but it didn't take it. And it lost out on all the advantage that God had provided. You follow? Me? We know too much. We've tasted of his goodness. Uh, we know he's gracious. Uh, we know. Hallelujah. We know. It ain't like we don't know. We know. Uh, that's why it makes it a great fall. Because you know. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and that house that's founded upon the sand is, is founded on that sand. That sand represents uh, uh, men's philosophies. Men's opinions. You can't fight the devil on an opinion. On a philosophy. I rebuke you in, in the name of Jesus that Paul preached. Right? The seven sons of Sceva did that. And the devil said, Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? Huh? They jumped on him and beat him, whooped him. <laughs> huh? Thank you, Lord. That's a shame. You follow me? So, 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 in order for us to fight, we've got to put on that whole armor and withstand and not retreat. Read, what's the same thing? What verse you in? 13. Read. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So you've got to be able to withstand what's coming at you in the evil day. Right. And having done all, to stand, stand therefore, <laughs> having your Lord heard about what's true. Yeah, meaning when he says, having done all, and having done all to stand, meaning don't retreat, then he says, stand, mm -hmm. therefore, read, with your loins, heard about 
with truth. Now, now, now we said earlier, no mystery, this armor relates to the word. You've got to know the truth of the word. Amen? The word brings truth to your mind. Honesty and sincerity. Amen? You got to know it. You should know the truth and the truth shall what? Make you free. Make you free. Free from the enemy. I used to say free from believing a lie, which is true, but free from the enemy, the devil. And the truth, the, this truth of God's word, it is, it is, it is a girdle. It supports. Yeah. It's not there for show and tell. Uh, that's a game we play. <laughs> All right, but it's not there for that. Amen. It's there not as an ornament. Some people wear some beautiful belts. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Some people collect belts. Huh? And but 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 you know the belts serve a purpose. Truth serves a purpose. It holds everything else together. You follow? Mm -hmm. All right, read. Having your loins girt about with what? Truth. Read. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now that breastplate of righteousness deals with the, the, the word of God that shows you how to live right. How to treat people right. right. How to treat God right. You follow me? Yeah. Holiness is about relationship. You follow me? I don't backbite on people. I don't talk about people. My own business. Uh, that's right. Am I right? Thank you, Lord. Uh, brother? Because it makes you want to track down what the breastplate actually is. But if you know the breastplate of the arm, or like of a suit on the armor, you know like yes. that's the strongest point on the armor. Yeah. And sometimes it's gold or bronze mm. signify the strength of it. So if you got Jesus Christ as your shield, you got the un, un, uh, unpenetrable yeah. breastplate. And then you can just imagine uh, just the body armor. Just imagine if, if they were going to a battle in the... Uh, Times when they was on sticks and horses, whatever the case was. Right. And he was missing his leg plate. Right. That's parts of the arm. He would lose his leg. Absolutely. You look, if you had this part missing, you lose your arm. So yeah. You basically, basically apply the, the word in Jesus Christ to that analogy. So that's how I, I feel like that was like perfect. Absolutely. And if you don't put on that whole armor, if you're missing righteousness right. out of your living, uh, then, then, then the enemy is going to overcome you. Amen? Huh? If, you, if you're not an honest and an upright individual, <laughs> you're a hypocrite. Right. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that'll destroy you. Am I right? Yes. So, so, so you got to know the truth right. and you got to be upright right. with it. There's a scripture I wish, it, I wish it would flow through my mind. Uh, uh, the scripture deals with uh, an individual who uh, uh, knows the way of righteousness but don't follow it. You know, that's not, that individual has a bad character. I uh, can't be trusted. You follow me? Judas was like that. He kept the money, but he couldn't be trusted. No. He was walking with truth, but wasn't applying the word of truth to his life. And ended up hanging himself. Wow. You follow me? Why? Because his character was bad. Yeah. You can't walk with God and have a bad character. Oh, oh that's what I want to say. You can't walk with God and manipulate the saints. I, I want y'all to I want y'all to give so so I uh, uh, get this elaborate plan to fleece the flock. Man. <laughs> that ain't right. 
You follow me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm getting mad up in here. <laughs> you can't, you can't do that. You can't, you can't manipulate each other. Scheme and plot. That's not righteous. Take advantage of your love and your kindness. Folk do that. Huh? You twist, folk twist the scriptures. So I gotta get off of this so I can move on. Folk twist the scriptures. So you know you're supposed to, to give. Huh? Whatever I ask you to give, you're supposed to give it to me. Huh? Twist up. That ain't righteous. Tricking the saints. Go ahead. Uh, I just experienced that literally just this past week. I believe it. But I just did it anyway because it's like this old man, right? He like, you know, he tried to he tried to calm me with the word. <laughs> so like they be seeing it in you. The older they see the light on you or they try to keep you. So he needs his flame to go. So he like, I don't know how to log in. I'm like, I log in for you. I do it for you every week. You ain't got to pay me nothing. I do it as long as it, this POA one on, I do it for you. So now, three weeks go by, I ain't hear from him. So now I'm just calling to check up on him. He, every time he calls for the same reason, it's to manipulate me to, to do the unemployment. Absolutely. Deacon Fields, hold that. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. I'll go there with you. Lord, help me get through this, Lord. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And no marvel. Huh? Yep. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. See, now, he's transformed into a deceiver. If you don't follow, follow after righteousness... You'll be a deceiver like him. He's transformed himself into what the Bible calls an angel of light. Read. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. See? Notice that? See that word there? Righteousness is connected to it. So the devil transforms his ministers into instruments of uh, uh, fake instruments of righteousness. They fake. You follow me? So you don't want to be that way. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Read that again. And no marvel. Uh huh. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Whatsoever man saw it, that shall he what? Also reap. Let's go back over. Hallelujah. I think we're on verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, oh. that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand, stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, now, the gospel now is your foundation from which you stand. All right? That's where you are upheld. So you've got to know the gospel. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And notice what it says. Uh, he's using another word. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. So in other words, you've got to be prepared to spread the gospel. Preparation. Being prepared. So therefore, he's alluding to study yourself, show yourself approved unto God. 
a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Be prepared to go through the scriptures as you witness to others to spread this gospel. I'm going to say this. One of the, the greatest things that you can do for God is, is spread his gospel. You follow me? God will move heaven and earth for you. If you make it up in your mind, I'm going to spread this gospel. You follow? Miracles, signs, and wonders will follow them that spread this gospel. You follow? So you got to prepare yourself to do it. Dig it, Fields? Yeah, I was just thinking, knowing and doing are two different things. Two different things. I know the sign says 25 miles per hour. But I've gotten 40. Yeah. You know, <laughs> doing, it, 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 it proves that you are applying what you know. Yes, that's wisdom. Yeah, sure. Applying what you know and understand is wisdom. Amen? That's wisdom. All right, read. So having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, read, of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith. Uh, now notice what he says. Yes. Above everything else. Mm -hmm. Because this thing can't work without faith. Right. <laughs> Follow me. Hallelujah. And notice, he says taking it. You got to take faith. When, when it doesn't look like you have faith. You got to take it. The enemy is trying to take it from you. You got to take it back. He says, above all, taking the shield. Notice what he called it. The shield of faith. And back then, the Roman soldiers, they had long shields. Not the most small round ones that you see. They, and the, the shield protected them. Faith protects you from head to toe. You got to take it. Follow me? The shield of faith. Read. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Remember we talked about uh, being able to stand in the evil day? This is when he's throwing his fiery darts at you. Uh, uh, just an arrow coming at you is one thing. But when you make it combustible, put some fire on it, it changes the whole thing. Huh? He's trying to burn you up. <laughs> Are you following me? Yeah. Now notice, what stands between you and the devil is that shield of faith. Right. What stands between you and the enemy is faith. Right. You follow me? You, that's why Peter was told by Jesus that the devil desires to sift you. Throw some arrows at you right. as we. But Jesus said, I didn't pray that uh, uh, he didn't do that. He said, I pray that your faith will not fail. When you are having uh, your worstness of the worst, increase your faith. You follow me? Because that's what's standing between you and the devil. As he's throwing those fiery darts. Notice what Jesus told him. He said, I pray that your faith won't fail. Then he says, after you have been converted, uh, turn around and strengthen your brother. After you come out of this, by faith, uh, you've gained some information so that you can help others. You follow me? So you got to take Faith and build yourself up on your most holy faith. The Bible says faith cometh by what? And that by what? The word. You got to hear the word of God with the intent to obey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, 
with all your might and with all your strength. You follow me? And these words shall where? Be in thine heart. Amen? That's the intent to obey. Leaning so I can hear from God. Y'all with me? Faith. Taking the shield of faith. Quench all that the enemy is throwing your way. The fiery darts of the wicked. Read. Uh, I was going to say, you know, Peter was sensitive because when Jesus asked him, he come out, when he asked him those three times, you know, you love me and all that type of stuff. Yes. Uh, Jesus knew Peter was times. going to, <laughs> Peter knew, uh, Jesus knew Peter was going to deny him. Oh, yeah. And, and go through all these things. And, and the devil throws that in your face. Oh, yeah. And all the time. You ain't no good. That's a fire to You done denied him. You ain't really no Christian. That's you know, a fire to He will use your failures to attack you. That's it. And what did Paul say we should do when that happens? Forgetting those things that are what? Behind. So you got to leave your failures in behind you. Repent. Huh? Oh, absolutely repent. Reaching for those things that are what? Before you. Don't live in the past. Huh? And then if it gets a little rough, then you start to do what? Press. Press toward what? The mark of the high calling of God, which is where? In Christ. Keep your mind on Jesus. Press toward your purpose. Press toward your calling. Get back on track. Amen? And that's what that scripture means when it says uh, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to what? Yes, I'm going to have some failures and the enemy is going to get an advantage because we're wrestling. You follow me? But i got to pull down that stronghold using the weapons that God has given me. Bringing every thought captive to the obedience of what? Christ. Trying to make it plain. Trying to make it plain. Amen? Oh, look, this is a good Bible college here. My God in heaven, help me, Holy Ghost. All right. All right. Read deep what it said. And take the helmet of salvation. Now notice. Now you got you got to keep your mind delivered at all times. Amen. And notice he said, take. You got to take it. Take the helmet of salvation. Take deliverance. God gives you promises. You got to take them. Just because he made the promise and it's yours doesn't mean that you're going to get it. You got to take it. Don't live beneath your privileges. I'm learning that. I'm learning it. And I want to say this. Help me here, Holy Ghost. God has given us all influence. Use your influence. Amen? That's why he made you the salt. That's why he made you the light. Lose your influence. Amen? Build up God's kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Read thee. And, the, and take the helmet of salvation. Take it. And the sword of the spirit. Now notice. Now, that's the only defensive weapon. All those other weapons are offensive. Right? So what is that telling you about the word? God's word is offensive and it's also defensive. Amen? So, so while you're withstanding, <laughs> God expects you also to wage warfare. He expects you to contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. You follow me? Perfect example, our Lord and Savior. Came a time when he was teaching 
about holiness and righteousness, about the kingdom. Then it came a time where he had to show forth some action. When those money changers was there and defiling the house of God. Follow me? It's time for him to take action. What did he do to them? Beat them. Whooped them. Put them out. Amen. Huh? Didn't take names. Didn't take names. There's going to come a time when you got to whoop some. I ain't talking about beating on people physically. Don't get me wrong, y'all. I want y'all to put a lawsuit on me. But you got you to step out. Huh? Step out. Have you ever, uh, sometime I be writing emails at, at work, and uh, sometimes some stuff just need to be said. <laughs> so I type it out. I did that this week. I typed it out what I uh, said need to be said. And I said, well, uh, if I send this out, it's going to cause a whole uproar. And I don't know if I'm ready for all that. I took out what I wanted, I, I, what needed to be said in my own mind, and didn't say it. You know, he said I choked up. <laughs> but, but I'm honest here. There's sometimes stuff need to be said, regardless of the consequences. That just wasn't one of them times. That was just me and my flesh. That's why I took it out. You follow me? But there's sometimes you got to take a stand. You follow me? Regardless of the consequences. Y'all with me? He pondering it in his mind. He trying to think. But that's good. Think about a, 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 a scenario where you got to take a stand and make up your mind that if it comes, I'm going to do it. Don't be making up your mind along the way. You know, I was talking to this guy. He had the right thing in his mind, but he waited too long to do it. He, he, he allowed the enemy to influence him. He said, I should have did it right away. Father, when you know to do right, do it right away. Don't put it off. The enemy can influence you. Get an advantage of it. Father, he's shrewd like that. All right, read, D. We almost done. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now, that that prayer, um, I believe, uh, my brother, he, he brought that out about the armor and riding on the horse, and then they got that long stick that's like a javelin, right? That's what this prayer is. It's like a, it's like a long stick, a javelin. Amen? Wherein uh, you can reach God who can reach the enemy. Follow me? You ain't, you ain't got to, uh, how can I say it? Prayer is that weapon that, that, that you reach out and, and affect your situation. Follow me? So he says, praying then with what? With all prayer and supplication now, in the spirit. Now notice what it said. In the spirit. We can pray our Father who art in heaven. You know what I'm saying? But there's going to come some times where you got to get in the face of God and pray until the anointing falls. In the spirit. And do that on a regular basis. Not on Fridays. Huh? Not possibly on, on, on Sundays when the anointing falls. But pray always. Huh? In a daily basis. Uh, 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 usually the old saints say, if I ain't spoken in tongue, I, ask, I think that's God what's wrong. You know, if, 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 and, and praying in the spirit ain't all about speaking in tongues. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's about uh, getting in God's presence and his Shekinah glory comes around you and he empowers you. You feel him. Huh? 
And that does something to you psychologically. It lets you know that he's there. He's with you. You follow me? Hallelujah. I heard one preacher said, told, told another preacher, Jesus is dead. And he said, can't be. I just talked to him. <laughs> Five minutes ago, we just talked. He ain't dead. Huh? He's there. He's real. God wants you to know he's real. He's there. And especially in trouble. Like when it wasn't a mistake when God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt and he was with them as a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. He was with them. He, he, he showed himself with them. You follow me? That's what God is with us. He's with us. Emmanuel. <laughs> uh, he's with us. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and you knowing that he's with you gives you confidence. Gives you boldness. Amen. Gives you courage. And, and that comes your whole, I'm on, I'm on, can I just teach you just for a minute? Your whole outlook will change if you pursue after God. It'll change. Whatever thing that you're going through now will seem like a molehill if you seek after God because he'll, he'll expand your mind. <laughs> you follow me? He'll show you his greatness. Huh? Moses got so bold with God, he said, Lord, show me your hand part. Show me you. That's what he asked. Him. God said, Yeah, I can't show you me. Huh? But I'll show you my hand part. I'll show you. I'll pass by you. Yeah, I'll show you my oh my God. Lord, show me your goodness. Huh? He'll show you, won't he? Even me in my foolish state. I was, I was, Gus got the Holy Ghost. I was praying downstairs in my living room. Everybody went to bed about 11 o'clock. Everybody got, I'm like, God, show me, show me you, show me. Just show me you. I'm, I'm going in, Lord, show me you. And all of a sudden, I felt this presence come in the room. And, and it scared the daylights out of me. I jumped up, went to bed. My wife said, what's wrong with you? What's the matter? <laughs> I said, I'm about to die. <laughs> Trying to answer my request. <laughs> my God, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will show up. I, I said, God will show up. Thank you, Lord. He'll magnify himself. That's why your situation will seem like a mole hill because he'll magnify himself. When you take your eyes off of uh, uh, your situation and put your mind on him, it'll make, it'll make life to your situation. Amen? Y'all know the story. Jesus was sinking because he took his mind off the Lord. Huh? And then when he put his mind back on the Lord, Jesus grabbed him up out of that water, put him in the boat. <laughs> huh? Somebody said there's recovery with Jesus. Huh? There's deliverance with Jesus. Uh, yeah, who would I say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Help y'all help me out. Yeah, Peter was, Peter took his eyes off. Thank you. Y'all with me? All right, we, we, we can finish it up. Praying always. Now, now you got to pray how often? Always. Always. Now, there's different types of prayer. Amen? Different types of prayer. We ain't got time to go through all of that. But he said, pray always. Read. With all prayer and supplication. Uh -huh. and now notice how he's using prayer twice. Pray with prayer. He's compounding it. The necessity of it. Pray with prayer. Be prayerful always. I would say, you know, nothing will come on you unexpectedly. When, when you are praying, you know, God is let you know, hey, something get may come, you know, something get may come your way. 
And you need to pray to find out how to handle that situation. Absolutely. It's always a continuance of prayer. Absolutely. Jesus' dis disciples fell in the garden because they were asleep and did not pray. Jesus told them, pray. Huh? At least she entered into what? Temptation. Temptation. And, and prayer helps you keep yourself in the God mode. Notice this. Let me hit this real, real quick and I, I'll get you. Uh, uh, it's like you start off fasting and you eat something. Why do you eat something? Because your mind didn't switch over to you being in the presence of God. But once you repent and continue on, huh, you become more aware of huh, what I'm doing. You follow me? Hallelujah. Uh, brother, they... When it says putting on the whole armor of God, the only way we can put on the armor is through prayer. Yes, sir. And study other words. That's why I said you got to be that anointing. Because prayer, when you read the word, it goes into your mind. And when you pray, it, it, it breaks up the fallow ground and it enters into the, your heart. Wherein that seed is there able to germinate and to sprout and to grow. That's how you develop the fruit of the spirit. Amen? Um, without that process, it won't happen. You can plant a seed on the ground, but you see people who water, they grass after they plant a seed, they're trying to open up the ground so that it can receive it. Same way with that word. It hits your mind. Huh? And, and when it hits your mind, it needs to enter into your heart. That's where you bring forth. You do everything that's in your heart. You do some things that are in your mind. You don't do everything that comes to your mind. But you do everything that comes come into your heart. That's why Jesus said, out of the heart huh, proceeds the issues of life. Y'all with me? Woo, we get good class tonight. My God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All right, read it. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, <laughs> that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. Now, Paul got a little selfish there. He said, for me, you know, pray for me that I can open my mouth boldly, that I may speak uh, and make known but the mysteries of the gospel. Because he realized that was his calling. Amen. All right, read. For which I am an ambassador of <laughs> violence. Yes. That therein I may speak boldly. Yes. I ought to speak. Yes. Now notice, what's causing him to uh, be bold? What's causing him to be bold is knowing his purpose and accepting his calling. The vision that God has for him. What will cause you to be bold and abound is knowing your purpose and the vision that God has for you. He says, my people perish for a lack of what? Knowledge. Yes. Huh? And without a vision, the people perish. perish. And, and that word perish in, 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 in connection to vision means they live without restraint. They'll do any and everything. Y'all with me? You gotta have some restraint. <laughs> Alright, read. What we say? We almost done. But that ye also may know my affairs. Yes. And how I do. Uh huh. Tetris, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know your affairs, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. He speeches the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. with sincerity. 
Amen. Amen. Give God a praise. Grace is with you if you love them. All right. And we certainly do thank God for everybody that has tuned in with us on today. And it's offering time in the sanctuary. Also, too, we want to remind you of our event uh, that's happening here at Christian Ministries uh, on Saturday. Um, asking all vendors to come to come and be with us. Uh, give me a call if you have a product that you want to sell. That's that's um, how can you say it? That's that's good. <laughs> so give me a call. Let me know. Hit me up, and we'll get you into the event. Um, uh, also, too, if you want to give, give through Tidely, uh online. Just find us uh, through that particular uh, avenue and give us. Find our church. Uh, Christian Ministries, and follow the promptings and give. All right, we thank God. We'll see you uh, once again on Sunday. Amen. Sunday, 11 o'clock at our worship hour. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.